Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I want to create a really beautiful mostly aqua but some hints of some other colors kind of colorway similar to the style I did in the January 2023 Chemnitz dye along where I added the dry powder onto yarn with no acid and then added water to sort of soften and blend things together. Uh, I love how that turned out when I tried that before and we're gonna try it again. Before I talk a little bit more about our colors today, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Lene. Lene, a huge happy birthday, happy, happy birthday, and thank you so much for being my lab partner. I want the star today to be bright aqua, and then I want to have Maybe not hints isn't the right word. I want to have some of the midnight blue, which is a little bit more purpley, indigo blue, which compared to midnight leans a hair more green. And then maybe, maybe some lilac to bring in a little bit more pink. But we'll see. We're gonna kind of see what the guys are doing and then edit our colorway after we've smoothed things out. But I'll talk about that more in a moment. Let's set up our dye bath. The sad thing right now is that I don't remember if when I was doing that live stream, if I started with water in the pan or not. Ooh, that is a little bit sad, but I think we're gonna start with no water on here. And right in this pan, I have 300 grams of Nitpix Bear Swish DK. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino wool. And unlike if I were gonna do this technique on yarn that is non-superwash, we will likely see some amount of the colors strike where we put them originally. Now, although we're not adding water into our yarn currently, um, I did not squeeze it out completely, so there is some liquid in there. In this little pan, I have a fourth skein of Swish DK. I'm just gonna sprinkle a tablespoon of white vinegar on it because as I said, this yarn was pre-soaked with no acid. Uh, and so this way, the yarn mop that we'll be using for today's video does have some acid in it. I'm gonna have it just off camera and I'll be wiping dye off of my gloves onto here. But now I'm gonna go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves so we can start applying our dye. My plan is to add the dye to one side flip the yarn over, add the yarn to the other side, and then we will add water on top of everything. There might then be some light patches, but that is fine. Okay, in the middle, I'm gonna do, this is some of the midnight blue. And I did notice going in two larger clumps that have me a little bit nervous. So I'm gonna take them Eh, and bring them over to our yard mop. Where is the other big clump? Because see, a large clump of dye like that uh, can be harder to dissolve. And so on our yarn mop, I can take it and rub it in more and really help that dissolve in a way that, I mean, I guess I'll be moving things around here as well, but it just felt like the right thing to do. But this dye has really sunk in already because we have so much uh, water in the yarn. Next, I'm coming in with the lilac. Now, of all the colors we're playing with today, this one probably is the least pigmented. It might look like we're getting some speckles in here. And, ooh, I forgot. <laughs> I don't know if it's without the heat or something, but this is quite, quite pink right now, maybe because we're cold with no acid, but it is a lot less pigmented than the midnight blue here. Next up is our indigo blue. And I can already see that I got some spread of the midnight blue on here, but that's also likely from when I was attempting to remove those larger clumps. And if you're curious about the colors, Here's our lilac, there's our midnight blue, and right here is our indigo blue, which is definitely more green than the midnight, which is a little bit more blurple. All right, and finally, it's time for our star. 
Bright Aqua. And I'm bringing this a little bit heavier, but also a little bit more all over. I'm just in between all these colors. It's going to spread for sure, and that's okay. But I'm just kind of curious what kind of effect we'll get with this palette here. And I'm not worried about that being too pink. Uh, I think the two colors will blend well, even though this aqua has like a hint of some yellow to it. The thing overall that does concern me is that those two colors are so pigmented that they might overtake everything. All right, but now I need to flip our yarn. And the way I'm gonna do this is one at a time pick it up and just kind of flip it over. And we are gonna attempt to approximately place the colors in the same place. It's okay if it's not perfect. Uh, there is gonna be a lot of blending that's gonna go on here overall, uh, but that's what we're gonna try to do. Okay, let's start with the lilac this time. Now, when we add water here and start moving things around a little bit, the colors are going to spread, but because this yarn is super wash, some of the dyes may strike a little bit where we've placed them already. Not a lot, but a little bit. Or at least there's a chance of that because I've seen that happen in the past. And that's a big clump in there. I'm in the midnight blue trying to get a good pinch. I guess if there's a clump, I'm gonna let it happen this time. We're in a slightly different spot than where we were with the first round, but anyway. Once we add our dye and move things around, if colors aren't the way we want it, we can edit it. Uh, we're not stuck. When you're doing a technique, you're not stuck where things are just because you're trying something and are doing a little experiment. Of course, you're always welcome to stop, but you can always add, well, okay, you can't always add more dye. If things are too dark, then that could be a little bit harder. But in theory, you can always add more dye. It's much, much harder to decide that you want to take some away. Now for our bright aqua. And we're just adding this a little all over. And so I don't mind if we get some light patches in our yarn. The question will be, where are those light patches located relative to everything else? How balanced do things feel? But you can also always decide that you want to add more color once the yarn is dry. You're not limited. You're not limited to like when you're dyeing it today or something. And the same goes with the yarn mop. If I'm not happy with the coverage there, we can always add more. I'm coming over here with eight cups of water and no acid to start with. And we're gonna pour this on and start editing our colors here a little bit. And by editing, I mean we're submerging, we're letting things dissolve. There's definitely some lilacs that have struck right away. Oh, but this is really, really pretty. I have no idea how much white we have. I'm gonna remove my respirator now. The fact that we have dye on both sides of our yarn to start with means that we're more likely to get reasonable coverage. Again, there might be some lighter patches and some deeper patches. There could be some more white in segments, uh, but that is gonna bring more evenness to it. Now, okay, we have a lot of color in here. I could, I could at this stage take our yarn and really move it back and forth and move it around. That's what I did in the Chemnitz Dialong, but I think I'm gonna let some of these colors be where they are. Things might spread a little bit more as we heat things up, but also they might not. Of all the colors, the lilac had a pigment in it that seems to be striking the fastest. Um, 
because I see almost little reddish speckles there. Okay, I added multiple tablespoons of white vinegar and then I'm coming in here again. You know, and this is blending these colors some, but also not completely. I'm just moving this dye through. Wiping my hands on either a paper towel or my yarn mop. But now, I wanna go and start heat setting our yarn. I've brought our yarn over to the stove where I've turned on the heat on two burners. I'm gonna have it on high just for a little bit until we start to like feel a little bit of steam. And then I'm going to uh, reduce the heat to low and we're gonna heat set everything here for 30 minutes. And as for our yarn mop, this is where we are right now. The overall color is not as soft, it's like patchier, but this will pair with what we've created super, super well. I'm gonna wait to do something to this until we finish the other colorway or until another dye bath uh, opens up. I could go ahead and just steam set this and I might still decide to do that or we could put it in an immersion pan. But because we had acid in here, I know these colors aren't gonna spread out very much and also because this is probably gonna be sitting here for around 30 minutes and so that's another reason why we might not see these colors spread very much if we dip it into a warm dye pot later on. All right, it's time to remove our yarn. It has been 30 minutes and I did come peek with a spoon. Okay, we've got a little bit of white there, but overall the yarn seems really saturated. There are a few white patches but I honestly don't mind. I mean, that kind of goes along with the overall technique and the softness that we have here. Like you might, one could describe things as being a little bit patchy, but that's not really my style. Like the colors are uneven, but I wanted them uneven. I didn't want them perfectly even. I prefer uneven. I guess the word patchy shouldn't be a bad word when it's coming to color anyway, right? All right, now I'm gonna come in with our yarn mop and see, like, we've had some acid in here. We're seeing, like, a hair of some color spread, but almost all of this color is staying where it was. And so that's why sometimes for these yarn mops, you know, you could see there's a hint of color there. But I've, I decided to do just like an immersion dye in the finished dye bath for the yarn mops versus just steaming it lately because it's going to soften things a little bit, but not too, too much. And we have this dye bath already here ready to go. So I'm going to heat this for 30 minutes and then I'm going to set it aside to cool just off camera. And then once our, I'll wash this one off camera. But once our main color is cool, then I'll go ahead and wash that. Let's wash Lene's yarn and the yarn mop from this video, which I already popped in. All right, and one thing I've been doing recently is just moving the zip ties a bit when I go to wash yarn, especially when it's something that I use with dry dye powder. Um, I also wash the zip ties at the end because if a little bit of powder gets stuck in there, then I think that's been the culprit to some staining I had seen. So not doing just like a rinse of the ties on their own at the end, but oh, this yarn is pretty and I'm not seeing any bleeding. Oh, I love the different blues and even the little uh, lilac speckles there are really, really pretty. Let's go ahead and add just a little dash of some dish soap. And we're gonna fill this basin back up with water. All right, and here we go. We're hoping for no bleeding. And I'm not seeing any, which is wonderful. It's wonderful. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish rinsing out all of this soap. And then I'm gonna put all of the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it to dry and we'll check out our finished colorway. Here is our finished dry yarn. There are definitely differences between some of these skeins, but I think that it's very, very beautiful. The colors are very soft. 
And really, the colors that I picked for this technique, those dyes, worked really, really well. I'm gonna have a little asterisk there, but most of the colors spread well, but also still stayed relatively where we put them, and so that is great. Our lilac has some pigments in there that struck a little bit faster, so we do have some speckles here, more so than anywhere else on the yarn. And I'm not upset about it. I think that it works with the colorway and adds a little bit of fun, but it's just good to know because if I wanted to try to get a soft purple, then maybe I should go for something more like a hyacinth and then add a little bit of pink to it. Uh, something that might spread a little bit more. But that's just something that you learn. The more you play with different premix colors, the more you know, and so then you know how to do things with those colors, I suppose. Our yarn mop is super pretty and pairs super well with this yarn. That is often the case when you have a colorway and then a yarn mop. It depends on how much the colors are blended together, but often the yarn mop does look really nice with the colorway because you have all the same colors, but in different proportions. Because when, you're, when we were dyeing this colorway, we used the most of bright aqua. But then when we went to our yarn mop, each time we added color there, we had a similar amount of dye on my gloved fingertips. It didn't matter how much I added into our dye bath, uh, there was still like the same amount of residue on my gloves. And so the colors are, have, they're a little bit more equal on the yarn mop, uh, with the exception of, well, I suppose like the lilac isn't as pigmented, and I think that's why it's not as represented as much over there. But either way, both of them are really pretty. <laughs> Lene, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly, and happy birthday! I hope that you are having a really fantastic day. If you want to learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Lene, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. There's a couple of options and feel free to message me on Etsy if you have any questions. And if you're hoping that the episode could air around a particular date, make sure you message me enough in advance. And if I have availability in my schedule, I'm happy to try to have an episode air near a birthday or anniversary or something like that. Just message me in advance before you sign up to be a lab partner. Thank you so, so much, Lene. I love how this yarn turned out and zooming in. I just think that that is so, so pretty. Sometimes it's, it's really funny because you see a yarn uh, just in the skein flat and sometimes you're like, oh, I don't know what I think, even though I did like this one. But then when you have it twisted up, that gives you more of a sense of how the colors would blend and maybe work together. And a lot of times I, it gets me really, really excited about the yarn. And I know that I'm excited to play around with this technique more. And I still have not yet uh, tried the yarn lasagna or kugel as we sort of coined it in the chat during one of the Chemnitz Hanukkah special videos uh, from last year. And so I'm excited to dye variegated yarn more uh, in these catering steam pans, starting cold, playing around with different techniques, and to just get better at it. Because each time I try something, I find I get better and better. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.